let's dive in first to the function of blood. So, I mean, we're talking about blood pressure. It's also important to understand what the function of the blood is because the pressure regulates how blood flow happens, right? And so we have very key, very critical functions of blood. Number one, it delivers oxygen and nutrients, right? So we get oxygen, I mean that substance that every cell in your body requires in order to generate energy, but also nutrients, vitamins and minerals. Your blood is the super highway that delivers this, right? So if you've got poor pressure or poor blood flow, this is gonna be hindered and that's gonna affect your ability to heal, to rest, restore, to repair. It's gonna affect you all the way across the board. We also know that your blood carries hormones. So thyroid hormone, adrenal hormones like cortisol and adrenaline and epinephrine. It carries your sex steroids. Remember blood is the super highway of your hormones. It also carries your immune cells. So those of you worried about immune function, right? We need the blood to function well. Those white blood cells and the different classes of white blood cells are delivered through the blood. And then lastly, one of its main functions is it regulates waste and pH. pH stands for power of hydrogen. It's the acidity or alkalinity of the bloodstream itself and that waste regulation. How do we take out the trash, right? How do we do that? We do that through water, right? Water is necessary to cleanse and clean and you know, blood is predominantly water. So these are the important functions of blood and it's important that you know that because we get into blood pressure and when blood pressure is altered, it can be quite dangerous. So statistically speaking, we know that one in three U.S. adults truly has high blood pressure. That's just in the U.S. alone, 67 million people. Now, again, we can talk about how they've manipulated that number, how the pharmaceutical companies have influenced that and manipulated that number. We'll get to that. High blood pressure contributes to 1,000 deaths per day. Right? Like, you look at this compared to the, you know, the virus that shall not be named, it, that virus holds a zero candles up to blood pressure as a problem, right? And so we, when you think about the, the nationwide and really the global like response to that virus versus what it actually should be for something that's truly dead, deadly and dangerous, um, we know our health authorities are failing us. And then we also know that high blood pressure is listed as a cause of death for about 348,000 Americans just in 2008. Now, this number varies from year to year, but... You know, again, multiply this over decades and you've got blood pressure being the cause of millions and millions and millions of deaths just in the U.S. alone, not including other European and other industrialized countries. We know that high blood pressure is a major risk for heart attacks, strokes, kidney disease, and diabetes complications. Now, pay attention because, again, I'm going to talk about some medicines here in a minute and, and what commonly are used to regulate in medicine diabetes kidney disease, as well as risk for heart attacks and risk for strokes. When we get into the medicines, remember, because I don't want to come all the way back to this, but remember these things, that blood pressure increases the risk for those things, which by default increases your risk for being medicated for those things, which can actually, again, increase your risk for developing um, blood pressure problems. So we'll get to that. So three ways, these are, think of these things here as categories of reasons. Blood pressure is very complex and, it's, and it, there are a number of feedback loops. There are neurological feedback loops. There are, there are oxygen sensory loops uh, within your blood vessels. So multiple ways that our body helps to try regulate blood pressure. So when it goes up or it elevates, I'm trying to simplify a complex topic for you. There are three big reasons, categorically speaking, why blood pressure will elevate. Number one is low oxygen to the brain. Inside your blood vessels, you have O2 sensors. These sensors register the quantity of oxygen coming through the carotid artery to your brain. And if that oxygen level reads low, it sends a feedback loop neurologically uh, to your heart and your cardiovascular system to increase pressure in an effort to try to drive more oxygen to the brain. So think about that in terms of what we do, what doctors do in medicine. And, and how ironic that is, is that they're trying to lower your pressure by reducing your risk, but in effect, they're lowering the quantity of oxygen that can actually get to your brain, but your body's saying, we need higher pressure because we need more oxygen to the brain, right? So the drug works against, in many cases, what the body is trying to do. And so, and just intuitively, this right here, if this is the reason you're developing high blood pressure, there's better ways to explore that than medication in terms of solutions. 
We also know that chronic stress can drive blood pressure. And one of the big reasons why this can happen is chronic stress drives hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. You know, long-term cortisol elevations cause elevation in blood pressure. Adrenaline, or, or otherwise known as epinephrine, causes elevation in blood pressure. And so again, chronic stress drives these hormones up and increases that. Chronic stress also increases your blood sugar and over time, blood sugar increases your blood viscosity or your thickness of your blood. And that when your blood, remember your blood is mostly water and it, and it should have a water-like viscosity or viscousness. Um, but when you drive up the glucose, you drive up the fluidic stickiness, if you will, of blood, making pressure go up because your heart and your blood vessels have to work harder to push sticky blood through your deep vessels. And then the third big reason, again, categorically is inflammation. And there are various sundry causes of inflammation. I mean, there's, there's, there's toxins that we're exposed to environmentally. There can be food, uh, food chemicals or components, food allergies that can drive inflammation. Heavy metals can drive inflammation number of things here drive this last process and the inflammation generally speaking again this occurs to the to the epithelial lining the interior lining of your blood vessels and it can reduce nitric oxide production which causes vasoconstriction of the vessel itself instead of vasodilation and that can again lead to that um, Lead, that inflammation can lead to that, leading to heightened blood pressure. Okay, let's talk about some of the independent or individual causes. So these, every one of these things could be placed into, again, a category in this slide. So if we look at, if we look at these causes of high blood pressure, we've got obesity. Obesity, for every, approximately for every extra pound of fat you have, your body has to grow miles of blood vessels to feed that fat. So again, the more mileage you say you, your body has to build in blood vessels, the greater degree of pressure you're gonna put on your heart and your cardiovascular system. So obesity definitely driving that. Now most people with obesity, this is a process of inflammation, right? Um, being overweight is an inflammatory situation. I know we're trying to normalize obesity and, and you see that a lot in, in press and on TV today, but, but obesity is an inflammatory problem. So let's not, let's, not, um, let's not delude ourselves of the truth. Sedentary lifestyle, and this sedentary lifestyle can lead to this, but sedentary lifestyle also creates poor flow of the fluid through your water. Remember, your body's 70% water and a big chunk of that, five liters of that is your blood. And, and so again, if you're sedentary and you're, and you're not moving, that blood is stagnant. Part of how we regulate blood pressure through activity is there are certain chemicals and hormones that are produced when we move our body. So being sedentary, we're not making those chemicals, blood pressure can go up. So, you know, so these two lack of exercise and sedentary lifestyle, both very, very similar. Now you could, you could exercise regularly and still have a sedentary lifestyle. And I see a lot of people that are guilty of this where their day, they're sitting at a desk for eight hours and then maybe they go do like 30 minutes of exercise or an hour of exercise. So there's, there's an imbalance between their activity versus their sedentary behavior. Again, you can't trade one hour of exercise for 12 hours of sitting and being sedentary. You've got to have more balance. So this is where walking and movement, this is where, you know, when people talk about this, you know, 10,000 step rule, this is where a lot of this comes from. If you're moving more frequently throughout the course of your day, it's definitely better for you and better for your blood pressure. Not enough sunshine. This has to do with um, not enough sunlight can actually uh, alter a number of different hormones, but it causes vitamin D deficiency or it can contribute to low levels of vitamin D and vitamin D deficiency can contribute to high blood pressure. Poor muscle mass. Remember, muscle helps regulate how water moves through your body and fluidic movement through your body. So poor muscle mass is oftentimes associated with what? With obesity. And then we have risk factors of high blood pressure. These are things that are, are things that you can change that, that are behavioral in nature, right? So smoking, alcohol consumption, excessive caffeine. I see a lot of people where um, 
you know, one cup of coffee is not, for most, is not all that big a deal. But then I get people that come to see me that are drinking a pot of coffee every day, right? So they're getting the equivalent of anywhere from 500 to 1,000 milligrams of caffeine daily. And what does caffeine do? Caffeine's a stimulant. It stimulates the, the adrenal glands and stimulates adrenaline and, and uh, can really rise or elevate your blood pressure in high quantities. Little goes a long way. Diet. Um, there are a number of factors around diet. Not one, all di- not one diet is the right diet for absolutely everybody. But as a general rule, when I say diet, what we're really referring to is a diet full of processed junk food that's being called real food. A perfect example are these new meat burgers that aren't really made out of meat. They're made out of plant-based proteins and it's full of garbage. And they're trying to pump that into the kids today as a health food uh, because we're also trying to... to to make kids and younger folks believe that somehow animals are causing global warming, which again, we don't have time to get into that tonight, but that's nonsense. But diet full of junk food, right? And carbohydrate toxicity, carb, excessive carbohydrates drive up blood sugar, driven up blood sugar again, increases that viscosity to the blood driving up pressure. Chronic allergies, and this could be food as well as environmental. And I see this frequently with people with not so much the allergy of gluten, but the sensitivity of gluten. So gluten sensitivity, very, very common uh, in this. High stress, I mentioned earlier, stress being a trigger. Poor sleep, not getting adequate sleep and shift work. And this go, you know, these go hand in hand because if you're a shift worker, oftentimes you're not sleeping well because of that shift work, especially a lot of the nurses and military and firefighters that are out there that are doing you know, three days of 12 hour shifts and they're working maybe those midnight shifts and then they come off of that three-day shift and now they're trying to accommodate to the regular schedule of everyone else and they keep yo-yoing back and forth. That can create uh, havoc on your hormones and your blood pressure regulating hormones. Then there are medications and we'll get into that shortly. Kidney disease, thyroid disease, adrenal disease. And so for, for most of these, these are what? These are inflammation. Disease means that your body is over inflamed and these organs are being damaged and their function is being diminished. And so inflammation can drive that. And what do doctors use to treat disease? Well, in today's world, they use medication. So if the medications that we're using to treat the disease uh, can actually be part of the problem of causing the blood pressure issue, where are we losing? Where are we winning? We're going to get more into the depths of that here in just a minute. So stay with me. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.